Hey there all, Omen here from Transition Partners, here for another episode of Leadership Lessons in Cyber. There we go. Hey there, Shailesh, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Aman, how are you? I am good, thank you, and thanks for coming on. The uh, This is the first podcast that we're doing for Microsoft Partner Journeys. Um, really, to be honest with you, I think me and you have obviously had a lot of different chats over the time period and probably for a couple of years how we've known each other for the audience who are going to be watching but me and yourself we had a conversation where we talked about your rock binging your background and how it led you to this point so i don't want to talk about microsoft here maybe one or two questions but really about yourself what you've done i'll stop talking now and i'd just love to get an intro from yourself about you know where you're at what your current role is and what you're doing now very good. Um, thank you, um, uh, Aman. Um, just to just ground everybody, right? Um, Shellish Bohr. Um, I I have spent 25 years um, in technology. Um, worked for world's um, largest organizations, software companies, companies who make the software, companies who actually leverage the technology. Um, so have had a very diverse experiences over the course of last 25 years. Um, um, you know, uh, but let me let me go back to um, where it all started. So grew up in Mumbai, uh, finished my engineering um, in India, and um, you know, upbringing was uh, was really a lower middle coming from a lower middle class family. Had to work really really hard. Uh, didn't have space to even study and had to figure out, um, you know, different ways to basically um, uh, make the best of what I had at that time. And that made the person who I am today. So um, I uh, I graduated in, in Mumbai, um, did my engineering and uh, always had a dream when I was growing up to um, work for world's largest technology company. So that was a dream um, I came um, to US with, and in a few years I had a chance to actually fulfill that dream. I worked for Oracle, uh, one of the largest enterprise software companies, and it was a phenomenal experience. Um, I traveled across the United States, traveled across the world, and saw how technology actually makes a difference in improving people's lives. Yeah, a really and- phenomenal, phenomenal experience. And you, me and you off camera, I think it was probably two weeks ago now. Um, you told us a lot about the backstory and people look at your position now, head of technology at Sleep Number, one of the largest and well-known companies out there. And they think that you've probably always been there and nobody looks at the journey that you've had. So go back to when you were in India, you you told me a story by where you were revising or studying, I should say, by a train track. Tell me about that experience and what that taught you now. Um, no, thank you for reminding me that uh, from our conversation. Um, so when I was um, growing up, uh, lived in a really, really small house. Um, it was 180 square feet. And uh, you know how today, right? You know, people have great rooms and living rooms and you know, um, guest rooms and entertainment rooms. And there was nothing like that. It was one room, dining room. And every and that was the only thing, right? And when you study for your um, a professional courses like, you know, engineering, um, uh, you need a lot of space to kind of just think, um, organize, um, and really um, study and didn't have that opportunity. So, um, my dad was definitely aware of it. You know, he was looking for how do I actually help my kids? And and one of the one of the things he did was there was a train track which was getting actually built um, probably about two kilometers from where I used to where I used to live. Um, and um, there was there was absolutely they had built it almost a one and a half kilometer train track, and it was going to be a four year project, and I needed space for studying for four years, right? Because it was a four year um, uh, bachelor's degree. And uh, um, so I used to take my bike 
go to this train track, which was getting built, and study for most of the day, get back home in the evening. And that became basically a place for me to actually go decompress, focus, study um, for uh, whatever I was going to do throughout my college life. And it really taught, uh, taught me a couple of things, right? One is um, never give up, never have excuses, right? You have to figure out how to make the best out of what you have. And it also teaches uh, uh, resiliency, right? It is resiliency, not giving up. Um, and I think it keeps you really grounded. I mean, I feel like, you know, those were the experiences I learned, um, which keeps me well grounded when I connect with either people across the globe, you know, people in my family, my colleagues, the, um, the people I work with, with uh, my customers, and it keeps really grounded. Yeah, and it's it's quite a some like a synonym for life. The train track, which is a destination, and obviously your destination was the states. That's a you know that that's kind of where you saw your career and the ambition. And you know when you came into the states, what was the biggest culture shock for you? Change in the way of work. You know, it was um, it is a really good question. Um, it was definitely a huge change. Um, culturally, mentally, language, food, ethnicity, side of the road you drive. I mean, everything changes, right? Uh, and um, it teaches you to be on your toes all the time. You are constantly learning. You are trying to integrate yourself in the business culture, the people culture. Um, but, you know, a language was another barrier, no question, even though I knew English uh, as a language because that's what I studied in, um, uh, part of my actual degree. Um, but uh, but just the accent and when you go from state to state and how that changes a little bit, um, there was a lot of learning. But it was, it always kept you or kept me actually on my toes. Yeah. Um, so I remember, you know, visiting customers or visiting different parts of U.S. and really studying about what the customer is trying to do or what the place I'm going to be in. Even simple, simple things like, you know, you go to restaurants and ordering menus, and you know, um, it was it was it was a big challenge, but I loved it. I loved it. The fact that you are trying to learn so much about a culture or a country, a people ethnicity and um you know in, in in india right we are always we we are we grow up in a multi-language um uh, community so mm -hmm. it was easier easier change no question but it was big it was big yeah and for me, again me and you spoke a lot about your your books that you read and sort of your passions there and a lot of it's about spirituality taking it away from spirituality really more about personal development what journey did you have to go from like from being in india to the us and then obviously succeeding in the us how's that journey been like for you for your personal development or even your spiritual books really how does that help you know that's a, a really a loaded question Aman, right so uh so let me let me start with maybe personal development right uh, I think um, this transition from coming to India and coming to U.S. definitely was a challenging transition, right? I was just out of college, had a you know 18 month experience, and I had uh, $200 in my pocket, and that was it, right? Um, and um, you know, I, I talked about resiliency earlier earlier in the conversation, right? And I think just that ability to adopt to changes is definitely something I learned. And I shared about things like language and, and cultures and you know learning about the customers here in the United States when I was in consulting. Definitely teaches you how to be resilient, um, how to be agile, right? That is, that is definitely from a personal development perspective. On a professional development perspective, you know, Throughout my career, and I work, as I said, I worked for companies who were who were the largest companies, more than hundred billion dollar companies, to 
companies who are 10 million dollar in the no in the middle of nowhere right in, in, a, in a in a deep countryside in um in united states that's where the manufacturing plants used to be in the past and they they still exist uh, because that was kind of the foundation of united states right the manufacturing and um and and I got to really see like how can technology really improve lives professionally. That was my biggest learning that technology has so much to offer to this world. Yeah. Not just in not just you know not just you know bringing in automation and things like what we have today, which is artificial intelligence, but literally, like literally helping them be better at in what they are today whether you talk about somebody in a retail store or in a manufacturing plant, or you talk, up, uh, talk about somebody who is running, you know, corporate functions like finance. There is just technology has so much to offer. And I think you are, we are all seeing it, right? I mean, ever since, I always talk about this, and you have heard um, me say this, Aman, ever since um, the iPhone was released in, 2007, the world has fundamentally changed. Like we now carry all of our knowledge in our pocket. It doesn't exist in books, right? Um, mm -hmm. It exists basically at the tip of your fingertips. It changed cultures. It brought new cultures. It created new opportunities. Everything is available on a phone. And that is, that's the promise of technology in my mind. And that's a good good segue now to sleep number so just you know everyone knows who sleep number is and me and you have worked together on that project before but tell me you know you guys are doing have been doing some pretty interesting things technologically advancement wise without sort of going into specifics that you're not allowed to talk to talk to me about your overall mission and i suppose strategy towards bringing technology closer to the consumer changing lives what's that look like for you at sleep number yeah, that's a that's a really good question, um, man. Um, I started working for Sleep Number in um, 2014. The organization had been there for a long time before that, mid 80s. But you know, one thing I love about Sleep Number is we are a mission driven company, and that's what keeps grounded us in terms of what decisions we make, right? So here is our mission. The mission is. Um, improving lives by individualizing sleep experiences. And we truly believe it because individuals, everybody across the globe, people at least spend eight hours of their, their day. That means just imagine a third of your life, you're actually sleeping. But how do we, how do you, how do you make sure that your sleep is sound, right? It is individualized to you. And it is really giving you that good night's sleep, um, which not only keeps your physical body um, going, right, when you wake up, but at the same time, mentally, you are ready for the next day, right? So that's the kind of mission. And that is what we keep going towards. Every single decision we make as a company, whether it is, you know, um, whether it is, um, you know, opening up new stores, or how do we actually innovate the next next capability in our bed? It all basically grounded on the fact that we are all about improving lives by individualizing sleep experiences. So, the company has been there for the last you know 35 years, but um, in 2014 we released the first kind of a digital. Um, um, capability, which is integrated in a, onto our bed, it's called Sleep IQ. Um, and that definitely was a game changer for us, right? So that was about eight years back. And what that um, technology enablement was, um, um, we, you now can sleep on your bed and we can actually show you how you slept last night. We can tell you what your heart rate was we can tell you what your breath rate was and we develop an algorithm which actually tells you what was your sleep IQ at the end of the night and that represents how you slept last night. 
and how how have Microsoft helped you with that? So, so Sleep IQ as a as a as a as a capability, it was we built it. Um, we actually worked with a company in Silicon Valley, um, funded them, and built this exclusive capability for our our beds. So today, our beds are all smart beds. We are a smart bed company, which now we are not a mattress company. And um, and um, and in, in about three years, once the first version of the product came, uh, was out, we actually um, acquired the company. So we have our, what we call it, sleep labs. That's in actually Silicon Valley. Um, and um, and that is what became, become now the foundation for everything we do going forward. So remind me the and question again. In terms of Microsoft's involvement with that. So obviously you guys have gone on a pretty extensive journey with them. Tell me about what they've done to support you and how that's helped the business and your role really overall. Um, absolutely. You know, Microsoft has been one of the one of the great partners um, in our technology ecosystem, right? So, so today, um, today we run everything about uh, Microsoft in our business function, right? So you think about all the way from things like Office 365, right? And with everything we have gone through the pandemic, imagine how important the collaboration across the team members are. That is one of the biggest thing um, uh, Microsoft does for us. Um, the second one is we use their data and analytics capability. We actually started that journey in about, I would say 2014, 15 timeframe, really spent amazing amount of time with partner building relationship with this company we believe that today we have one of the best relationships in the industry with this company um and you know when you have that kind of relationship you have access to a lot of microsoft um, internal knowledge or experience right so when we were actually looking at refreshing uh, or i would say just taking a leap in our data and analytics capability we said, let's just work with a company who is actually trying to re-innovate themselves. And if you remember around 2014, I believe Satya Nadella became the CEO of yeah. the company and definitely changed you know, the, the culture of the company in terms of how they actually keep technology and what, what it means for the world, for the individual, for the community, right at the center of it. And as part of that, and our relationship had access to their product engineering organization. And we spent about a week um, at Redmond with Microsoft, really understanding how are they thinking about data and analytics as a fundamental game changer um, for every single organization on the face of this planet and really looking at refreshing their entire technology. And obviously cloud, they were already in Azure they were growing really fast. So it was all going to be in, in the cloud and spent five days with their product engineering team, came back and did our first proof of concept. And that was kind of the start of our data and analytics capability, which over the period of last seven years, we have grown to a point where it actually is a fundamental fabric to our decision-making today, right? It is a, it is a capability uh, or a technology which enables all of our frontline teams and how they make decisions um, today, our supply chain, how we run our supply chain, uh, our analytics for our corporate functions and how we make business decisions. So so that was kind of the second area where uh, we really brought Microsoft capability and it's now at the center of everything we do today. Yeah. The, the third big one um, was we, as we were looking at, you know, we have a lot of retail stores across the United States, and we said individual. You know, we are we are all about individualization, right? Just like we are individualizing sleep experience, we want to make sure that our customers, when when they go to the store, their experience is individualized for them, because we truly believe in individuality. And to do that, we needed a capability or a platform in the store in people's hands 
right? Like a mobile capability. Um, and we started looking at who is out there, who does it really well. And um, Microsoft's capability, which is Microsoft Dynamics, became um, a choice for us. Uh, we did look at other options, but this was the best capability which were out there for us. And today we run a lot of our store experiences for our store professionals on Microsoft Dynamics. Awesome. And that's obviously a journey that has taken you very far and hopefully for the next five, 10 years continues. And I want to go back to something about yourself. So you mentioned them humble beginnings, stuff about resiliency and growth. Tell me, like the, the market now, the way I see with, uh, with recruiting, right? You see people who are 21, 22 coming out of college. They're asking for £150,000 straight out the gate. And, you know, they're looking for that that instant win. But what what advice would you give to juniors coming into an IT department, whether that's security, whether that's ERP, whether that's cloud? What advice would you give to them? You know, technology has, uh, that's a really good question. Technology has, has evolved so much that... Um, I remember reading this statistic, this was probably a couple of years back, um, and I gave this example of how I, um, first iPhone fundamentally changed our life and changed cultures. Um, but anyway, this, uh, this statistics I was reading was around sensors. And, um, and um, a few years back, the sensors were basically things we carry in our pocket, right, our phone, but today, the sensors are everywhere. It's in our TVs, it's in our beds. Um, you know, it's everywhere. You look around and you have sensors and there is gonna be an explosion of sensors um, over the period of next, I would say five to 10 years. It might actually even quadruple, right? In terms of the number of sensors we exist today. And with that comes a lot of opportunities for yeah. For, uh, for technology, right? So the advice I would give to the, the young professionals who are actually trying to consider technology or come into technology is just the promise of it, right? It's all about improving life. That's the first thing, right? So you, you really, you re, you're really making a difference in somebody's life and that somebody could be anything, right? That could be a person in a store, in a manufacturing plant person who is actually shipping the product through Amazon at your home, right? There, there it could be anything. And and so that's, a, that's the first thing is like, you gotta look at the bigger promise of technology, um, not just learning, but what it can actually do for improving people's lives on this planet. Um, the second one is, um, is there are so many opportunities today in technology. Um, technology is going to be an enabler, as I said, for life, improving it. It's going to be an enabler for companies to actually deliver amazing customer experiences and gain market share. And it is also a driver to basically improve the productivity of every person on the face of this planet. So it improves basically profitability of an organization, right? So it is omnipresent, to tell you the truth. And there are so so much, there are so many opportunities. You think about data, you think about building mobile experiences, you think about security. It has created new careers. Um, and today's young professionals who are really trying to get into technology, there is so much available for them in terms of what they can learn, how they can learn, how they can apply, right? Just pick something, learn and be the best at it, but do it with the best intentions you have. Absolutely. And actually, there's a point I want to make on that as well. So because I go into to place these people into companies, there is opportunity, which is great. And you can probably experience so many different things. So one, one year you might be, you know, diving into ERP, but then you might want to change to cloud because of the syner synergies between mm -hmm. them. There's so much opportunity there to explore at the start don't be pigeonholed so straight into one thing because you might find that you want to change. You look at your career, right? Consulting from developer to consulting to now head of technology. 
there's so many different routes to get to where you want to be so be open-minded that's that's my advice and that's what i tell people so that's i think that mirrors what you said and given your position now the the next question is you know given you're a head of technology now and you probably research a lot about trends what do you see as the future trends for technology and how as you say it will help improve people's lives yeah no that's a that's a really that's a really great question i want to just uh, when one make one comment about uh, the previous question as you said right that um that don't you know don't look at just this one thing right when when you are building your career um I always I always say your careers and your life is never a straight line. Yeah. And be very comfortable to take a tangent, but come back because you know that mission or something which is going to keep bringing you back to where you want to be. Have that which is which is going to help you to maybe take these, I want to say diversions, but but come back to what you want to do, whether you know you want to be. Uh, whether you want to be a learner or you want to be best at ERP or you want to be best at you know building mobile applications, um, but it's okay to it's okay to actually be uncomfortable because that that situation you will learn the most. But keep yourself grounded to come back. Absolutely, it's all about the track. How you get there, it doesn't matter. There's a there's a really cool um, sketch of that where it says you go from here to here to here, you go down, but then you you get to the top eventually if you work hard. And the um, the question about future trends, given your position, what do you see that being, Shailesh? So today, you know, um, I think the way I think about it today, um, big trends in technology are um, definitely definitely going to be around. Security. Security is a big trend out there, right? Because you could see, as I mentioned about sensors, technology is going to be everywhere. And there are good people who actually create technology. And then there are people who want to really, you know, um, explore ideas to to uh, use it for a, for a different purpose, right? Um, and you... There, there are just going to be a lot of security-related opportunities are going to be there. Securing um, your company's um, data, securing people's privacy is going to be really critical. So there's just going to be a lot of, lot of, um, I would say, um, opportunities as well as growth in this area in a good way as well as a bad way right so bad actors are going to figure out a way to explore um, um expose explore explore and the good actors have to basically figure out how to stay in front of them so that's going to be a really big trend in my mind the other big trend is going to be data and analytics has been a trend for for a long time and um, that i will i will i will say that we still continue to be a big trend how do you leverage data and analytics for the best of uh, whatever the company is trying to do. The third one is going to be, there is going to be a fundamental shift sometime in the near future. I don't know what this is going to be, where, you know, how how the, how, um, the pandemic actually changed the way we we now work with each other, right? We people are working from anywhere, working from home, work for their day and it's because of because of what happened right in 2020 and 2021 and i think that not that trend was there definitely no question about it right a lot of people in technology used to do that uh, prior to pandemic but now it's everybody does this right you run your stores okay. online like microsoft is a good example actually if you think about it there used to be microsoft stores i'm not sure um, how how many people are aware of it, but um, uh, but they don't exist anymore now. Microsoft stores are all virtual, so there is this whole trend of really running your entire business virtually and how to be better at it, right? So, um, but the next evolution of that is going to be um, 
this whole augmented reality kind of a technology, which is still not mainstream yet, right? It is trying to definitely come into gaming to start with, but companies like Facebook, you know, they're, you know there's, they have been in, in buzz for a few weeks now about this whole thing around metaverse, where you can represent yourself as a virtually in pretty much everything you want to do in your life. Yeah, whether you want to work with your colleagues or hang out with your friends um, or, you know, go to a, a music event, um, everything would be done virtually. So there is a lot of buzz around, around metaverse, but, the, but, the, but at the center of the metaverse is all about augmented reality or people call it sometimes mixed reality. So that's going to be a, a huge trend uh, going to be there. For people who are technology professionals who have been in technology for a long time, um, there is there is definitely a trend on how do you digitize your your experiences in your enterprise. So I will give you an example. Things which are which used to be ERPs, where it used to be on uh, you have to be in front of a computer, but but going forward. If if you if you can't fit your experience on a mobile device, probably you are not going to be actually get um, the adoption of that what you, what you want, right? So everything needs to be thought through this whole notion of mobile first, cloud plus, and Microsoft actually talked about this. So this is their words actually, right? Cloud first, mobile first, and I think that's going to be kind of the the the. The foundation going forward, you know, cloud has to be looked at as your first option, and then mobile experience has to be your first option when you're designing any experiences for anybody, uh, for the enterprises or for for individual customers. So that's another big trend out there. The other one is, as I said, a big one for technology professionals is how do you get your infrastructure the systems you have internally uh, used for several years and built for several years for companies, that all has to change from back office, it has to come to the front office, right? So there is gonna be this huge change of how you, how you actually used to do technology in the past and how do you actually get it ready for mainstream. Um, and the other big one I can think of is, and this has been there for a long time, there has been a lot of hype around it over the product last so many years. Um, but uh, it, this, uh, this technology, I'm actually missing the name, but it's all about uh, um, this uh, common ledger, right? Which you can, uh, you can share. Now it's actually at the foundation of Bitcoin. I'm actually missing the name. I'm having a brain freeze right now. But um, what is it called? Uh, give me a second. Uh, <laughs> I haven't heard of this. Sorry. Yeah, no, you you probably have heard it. It's uh, it's a distributed ledger technology. It's uh, it's uh, it's going to be mainstream. It's called um, you know it's at the center of Bitcoin. Um, blockchain. That's the word oh, I was looking for. Blockchain. So blockchain is going to be it's going to come to mainstream and i think uh, definitely it started it started with bitcoin currency that's how it you know it um, actually uh, born out of but uh, lots of companies are looking at blockchain as a fundamental growth driver as well as a way to protect privacy security of your data, right? So financial systems definitely took the lead on it, but a lot of manufacturing companies, a lot of technology companies are actually going to integrate that into their technology. So blockchain is going to be another big trend out there. It's been a trend for a while, but it will continue to be a trend. Right. And last question. This is more for people who maybe want to reach out to you. If they've got any questions, where can they reach you? Where's the best? So people can reach. Um, um best right uh, the best way to reach for people is, is linkedin find me on linkedin send me a note that's the best way to actually keep connected again owned by microsoft um, they are a visionary in this space 
saw you know linkedin was yeah. going to be the next big thing when it comes to professionals um so you can find me on linkedin perfect shardesh thank you for your time Thanks for listening to Leadership Lessons in Cyber. I look forward to seeing you all on the next episode.